Okay, so this is pretty cool. This is what you see in the 12-inch uh, cluster when you get into your new 2020 Corvette. That's kind of a cool way to welcome you to the new Corvette when you get inside. And I'm going to tell you a little about the functionality of the, uh, the two screens we have in the Corvette. Now, so this is your 12-inch uh, your cluster. And you see as it goes through the different driver modes, tour, sport, you see for sport it rotates the tack because you're going to be in the higher RPM bands. And when you get the track, we looked at the, uh, what we use in the race cars. It's very purposeful, functional, the digital readouts, and uh, really takes uh, off of racing where you just want to have that information as fast as you can. Uh, tour mode, more relaxed, straight tack, and then you see how it cycles through here. And then you'll notice we have on the left side, we have gauges. On the right side, you have our driver information center. So on the left side, uh, gauges, we call those info tiles, and you can select them. There's actually uh, eight possibilities. So on your uh, weather tour and sport mode, you can pick two gauges uh, to put on the left side, whichever the two you want, ranging from you know, battery, ELSD, fuel economy, G-force, oil temperature, oil pressure, tire status, which is both pressure and temperature, and transmission fluid temperature. So you can pick your two gauges you want and have them displayed all the time. In track mode, uh, we made that even more um, functional with four, uh, you have the choice of four little more compact gauges on the left side there to pick from. So you can pick four of the eight on those. And then you can also vary it for, so that you know, your tour, your sport, your track, you can have different gauges in each, wow. in each mode as well. But if you don't want to touch it, we set it in the factory for you, what we thought you would like, but you're always welcome to customize and make it to what you like. But if, you set, if you're thinking, well, this seems a little complicated to mess with, don't worry, it's all, we all set up, we put like, in, in the sport mode, we put like the G meter and oil pressure, and then, you know, the, the um, so we, we tried to tailor it for each of the modes. And it, it'll remember which you, which settings you do too if you customize it, and then you know you can customize it based on each driving mode. So if you want to set up your Z mode or your My mode with individual customizations, it'll remember that every time you go into that mode. Right. Good point. Good point. It remembers it, so every time you start the car, it's where it, where you left off. And somebody may have a question about those where you have the small digital gauges. I, I, you might say, well, am I going to have to remember at what temperature I start to get into trouble? Because in the gauge, you kind of see how far it goes. The perimeter of it starts to glow different colors as you get close to a warning. So just out of the corner of your eye, if you're on the track, you not only get the digital, but you can start to see when you get to the yellow zone or the red zone. So really easy to spot once you get there. Very cool. So on the right-hand side, I'm going to show you how that looks. So you have different functions, different columns. You control this all through the steering wheel, control and thumb wheel. So you have your trip computer information, fuel economy, trip timer. Then we have performance category, zero to 60, lap timer and friction circle. We have an audio category. You can easily access the out audio. We have maintenance, oil filter, air filter, engine life, and then, uh, we have our options, we can get in there and really you can, if there's a certain cluster you want all the time, you can overwrite that and do that. You can check your, your units, your tire pressure, things like that. And then finally, if you say, this is really too complicated for me, I just want things to calm down. We have to on this. <laughs> just, that's just too much. I just need to unwind. So there's a quick little tour of the, uh, the new gauge cluster. There's another cool feature I don't know if Harlow was planning on call. Are you going to talk about stealth mode? Uh, no, I, I can't. So another cool feature is the same, it's kind of like simplify, but when you're driving at night, and sometimes you don't want to be distracted of a bunch of lights inside the car, if you turn the dimmer switch, which is on the left side, if you just keep turning that, it'll get dimmer, 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 and the very last click turns everything off except what's legally required. So it's just basically speed. And so the whole interior is just dark. If, you, if all you need to know is speed, and I just, you know, it's a dark night, you want to concentrate on seeing out the windshield, that's like a stealth mode. Very cool. Very cool.
And one, one of the things that, um, Sorry. One of the things that we really tried to do uh, for the seventh gen to the eighth gen was make it so there was less interaction you needed to get the information you wanted. So you didn't have to cycle through as many pages. So you see in the right hand corner you have your fuel and your range is always displayed, which is always nice to have. And we have the temperature on the left side that's always displayed. So we kept that there all the time. And then we even also have the gauge. Uh, V8 or V4, so you can see if the active fuel management is going. And in the upper right, you see this little rectangle with the three dashes. Uh, normally, when you're on road, that'll show you the, your speed limit sign. And that some of you may look at that, and some of you probably don't care, but we're <laughs> set up for your, your service. And then the head up display, uh, we also have tour, sport, and track, and you can also um, you know, customize these set to, uh, to pick whichever one you want to use uh, in the different modes. Again, head up displays included in 2LT and 3LT. And uh, one of the neat things about it is on the tracks mode, we made that really simple, again, with the large gear uh, indicator, the shift lights at the top, again, very racing oriented. And, it, and if you have your uh, Performance data core hooked up. It'll it'll give you your lap times as you go and the plus minus as you do if you're out on the track. And then the sport mode in the center there gives you the round tack and the G meter as well. And we brought turn signals back to the hut. <coughs> uh, people, well, I know you know who you are have been asking for that. <laughs> yeah. And then our, our center screen. Chevrolet uh, inter infotainment system, and this is used across a lot of the Chevrolet cars and trucks. But it's a very simple, easy to use uh, system. We also have standard Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, no subscription required. Like some people, we won't mention. You <laughs> uh, <laughs> just get it, you can use it as much as you like. And uh, we even have a screen, it's a combination screen. If you audio and uh, navigation together. And you can also control uh, the uh, air conditioning or climate control from the touch screen as well as the, the strip of buttons down the center. So you can actually do the, do the touch screen too, whichever you prefer. Is the nav automatically updated? The nav we have um, on the navigation. Oops, where did I go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, went, I went all the way back. So the navigation, we have uh, real-time traffic now that's connected, uh, navigation it's called. So it will update, you know, red and green traffic and also give you the best uh, route based on the traffic. Well, updates over the air to the traffic. And the maps, the maps are updated. As there's an SD card that will have the, the maps in there. So, did I go back too far? No. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. So the new, uh, I want to talk a little bit about to the new performance data recorder. Uh, you know, we pioneered this back in 2015, and I don't think anybody's come close to even matching it, given all this time of having an integrated video, audio, performance data system as part of the car, as well as with the Cosworth toolbox that allows you to be like a junior race engineer and analyze your information. But we didn't stand still. We've improved that for the, uh, for the next generation. So some of the things that are, that are new, uh, a lot of people ask for this, you can have it set automatic. So every time you get in the car, it records. You last for that like a dash cam idea, so it's always recording in case something interesting happens, you have that <laughs> recorded. <laughs> and um, the other thing we, ha we had, we've added the capability of both um, circuits, you know, your, your normal circuit track, or autocross or point to po point type of circuits. So you can have a different start and finish line. And then there's also, um, it'll save the start finish lines in a library, and hopefully we've got Cosworth's going to put some of those together. But as so that one of the things you want to do is compare, so you can have a database 
of start finish lines for different tracks on your SD card and you just pick the one you want so you don't have to set it all the time and everybody could share those. If there's an official one to use, you can have that uh, built in. And of course we still have the valet mode, one of my favorite features. You, and God forbid somebody has to drive your car somewhere. <laughs> you know, but people in New York and LA, the nice restaurants, you got to do it sometimes, but it'll record uh, what happens when you're not there. Now we did talk a little about um, the, the, the speakers and how those are integrated into the design. And we work closely with Bose. And this is the first, um, what Brandon called, called performance series for the new Corvette. And um, this is on the 2LT and 3LT. It's 14 speakers. It's a lot for a little two passenger car. And 640 watts of power. And there's really a state of the art uh, audio system. Um, it, it, it was at the point, to tell the story, it's at the point where they were reducing the sound, and we said, why? Because we just didn't think anybody would listen to it this loud, not that it couldn't do it. And I said, no, nope, that's what the volume knob is for. <laughs> so you can put it, you put it about halfway, and it's about as loud as you ever want it, and it goes even more. But when you know, when you take the roof out, high speeds, you want to crank it up, it's an excellent uh, system. And we're very proud of, the, of uh, working with this. And uh, you know, they, we do have a, a long history with Bose going back to the 1984 Corvette of having them as our uh, audio system supplier. Is there a way to make the car's sound system stay on when the car turns off for like an hour or so without an artificial sound? I have a C6. have to leave it in, in what we call accessory mode where you have to you have to hold the start button in without starting the car without holding the brake and it'll stay on it does eventually shut yeah it does eventually shut down because we don't want you to be able to start the car when you leave <laughs> That's how we take care of you. <laughs> just things exactly like this. It's a great example. <laughs> noise cancellation. Uh, yeah, I think um, we have uh, we do have noise cancellation, which we have on today's car. It cancels when it goes into V4 mode. Uh, it doesn't sound like a V8 when it's in V4 mode, and that's all at light throttle, so it's not making a lot of noise anyway. But it does get a little boomy. And that's a little tiring on long trips, and it can stay in V4 on a long trip pretty easily. So that's where we use cancellation. If you look at the door trim, towards the rear, right off your outboard shoulder, you'll see a little plastic bezel there. It looks like it's a snap-in thing to cover a fastener. It's not. It's actually a, a microphone cover. And so the system, the audio system, is listening to what you hear, and it's positioned there because it's as close as possible to your ear. And based on what you're hearing, um, in certain frequencies that we know you won't like, that's where we cancel. So whether the audio system's on or off, it's doing that. Even if it's playing music, it reverses the sound waves at your ears uh, to cancel that sound. And it's amazing when we do a demo, when we turn the system on and the sound goes off, you'd swear the switch is working the opposite way. That when you turn it off, you hear the noise, you'd swear the audio system is making that noise, not canceling it. It's, it's uh, amazing technology. And I think the next thing we have is the uh, reveal video. Okay. While we're talking about the audio, there's a funny story, because this audio is still kicks butt. Um, I mentioned Mark Royce earlier. We were doing a, a, a desert evaluation, so we're, we're in Yuma, Arizona, where we have our proving grounds. Um, our senior leadership came out to check in our progress on the car, and one of the issues we wanted to show them was how visible are these displays when the sun is on them? Because you guys know, historically, the sun at certain angles washes out the display and you can't see. Now we're in fully reconfigurable displays, so they're the brightest ones we've ever done. We got all these advanced coatings. So the demo idea was we're going to park a car, we're going to take the roof out, and we're going to get Mark Royce present. We're going to tell him to drive slowly in circles so the sun comes in at every angle, um, and so he can evaluate the displays. Well, he didn't do that. 
Um, he took off down the track. <laughs> and he said, how's the radio? I said, pretty good. Let's see, let's see how good. So he gets in. Here we are, cruising around. The whole team's standing around waiting for him to do this low-speed evaluation. <laughs> and we go blowing by at 120 miles an hour with the roof out and the radio cranked to the max. <laughs> so we never have any fun at work. It's just sheer drudgery. <laughs> but that shows you the kind of guy, you know, he tell them to evaluate the displays, no, he's all about the whole car and the whole experience, which is, you know, kind of a, a dream thing when you guys get these cars, is this is how uh, you want to experience them, having that joy uh, of driving. So, so, was he happy with the radio? Yeah. He loved the radio. Yeah. <laughs> he loved the car uh, even more. We slowed him down, eventually made him look at the displays, and they are uh, very, very bright, very crisp. Uh, you can see the graphics, and so uh, they're visible in any lighting situation we've encountered. So I think that's all we were going to cover today. We'll be back tomorrow and we'll talk about more about some of the other features on the car that we haven't gotten a lot of airtime, a lot of time for questions, but we just wanted to share the reveal video with you before the Q&A. So go ahead.